morning, dear ones, and welcome to worship here at St. Paul Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are with us, and a special welcome to any visitors who are with us, who might be joining from farther away than here in Wheaton, Illinois. All of us are joining from a distance uh, in this time of social distancing, but for anyone who is not a member of St. Paul Lutheran Church, we are so glad that you are here. A particular announcement before we begin worship this morning. You'll notice that Pastor Jared is not with us in the space recording worship this morning. A member of uh, Pastor Jared's household was exposed to the COVID-19 virus, so their family is choosing to self-distance and self-quarantine for two weeks. Um, in the meantime, you will wait additional word from uh, Pastor Jared and his family as they continue to uh, self-quarantine and take care of themselves and take care of the rest of us by maintaining a good distance. With that, we will continue our worship today with our children's message, and as we continue our worship in this season of Easter, hearing stories of Christ encountering us on the way, the risen Christ welcoming us with strange stories and a few chuckles as well. Hey kids, it's me, Pastor Jared, and I'm here once again with my trusted assistant, Miss Abigail. Say hi to everyone, Abby. You might have heard that Abby, her mommy, and I were sick, and it's true. We all have had the COVID-19 virus that everyone is talking about. But we're here to tell you that we're doing okay. Abby is feeling much better. I would say you feel like your normal self right now, right? And what were you doing today earlier? You were what? Jumping on, jumping the, on the trampoline. She was trying to show you with her hands that she was jumping. So she's doing much better, so is her mommy, and I'm getting better every day. So thank you very much for your prayers. And I'm thinking about all the things that happened to Jesus, and it kind of reminds me of what's going on in our world right now. So you know how we're scared right now about this virus and nobody wants to be sick, and even though we are recovering, there are people that are not recovering so easily. And so these feelings of fear, and there's also some feelings of excitement because you're thinking, I can't wait till we can go back to the park again. I can't wait till we can be with our friends again, or we can go back to church and be together in that building and in that place. Well, these are the feelings that the disciples were having after Jesus died. When he died, they were scared. They were sad. They didn't know if people were going to be coming after them. But they also were excited because they had heard that he rose from the dead. So two of these disciples were walking on a road one day, and they were walking to a place called Emmaus. And as they're walking there, who do you think appeared out of nowhere? Jesus. Jesus appeared out of nowhere. And they didn't recognize him. They didn't know it was Jesus. And he said, hey, what are you guys talking about on the way? And they said, how are you the only person that doesn't know? Don't you know about Jesus? And he said, no, tell me about it. And so they said everything that had happened. But of course, Jesus already knew because it's him. It all happened to Jesus. He knows all about it. And yet Jesus said, didn't you know the scriptures said all these things must happen to the Messiah and that he would be handed over and he would die, but he also would rise again? How foolish of you not to believe. And they stood and believed and they stood and know that Jesus was standing there talking to them. It wasn't until later in the night that they recognized Jesus. When do you think, Abby, that their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus? He, he appeared out of nowhere. He appeared out of nowhere, but what were they doing? What are the things that we do around a table when we're getting ready to eat supper or lunch? or breakfast. What are we doing at the table? We're eating. We're eating, yes. It wasn't until they were eating that they looked and their eyes were open and they're like, oh, it's Jesus. And just as quickly as he appeared, he disappeared before their eyes. But they went and they told the others all the things that happened. And I think it's important for us because sometimes Jesus comes to us when we least expect it. Sometimes Jesus comes to us when we are scared or we're sick, or we're sad, or we're so excited that we can't think of anything else. All these feelings were happening with the disciples, and that's when Jesus appeared to them. And the same thing happens to us. So be on the lookout for Jesus and his love in the people around you, and know that he will come when you least expect it. Amen.
We continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we gather around God's word. The first reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter beginning with the 17th verse. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. 
For you know that it was not out of perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Though to him and you, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not out of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk alone? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of the women in our group had amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them all that was said about him in the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. Then they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. God who journeys with us, you meet us on the roads we travel. You meet us in our places of rest. You break bread with us at table and share stories all the while. You surprise us in the ways you show up in our world. You surprise us with words of hope in the midst of our grief. You surprise us in ways that we can't put words to. We praise you for being with us and for these myriad surprises. May the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. The story of the road to Emmaus and where it falls in this season of Easter has given me a lot to reflect on this week. First, this story takes us a little bit back in time to the day of the resurrection, a solid amount of time before the story of Thomas that we had last week in our gospel text. While these two disciples we hear about today might not have been integral, close people within the uh, story of Jesus' closest disciples, it still seems that their story is very important to the larger narrative that's happening on this Easter time. Additionally, we can encounter some amount of humor in today's text as well. Jesus definitely knows what happened in Jerusalem and doesn't really need these two people to tell him what happened. In a way, especially after last week's holy humor celebration, I'm wondering if the season of Easter might be somewhat of a season of humor as we think about the theological ramifications of Jesus' resurrection, but also the ways in which these story writers frame these stories for us. Despite the places where humor shows up last week and this week, humor seems so foreign to our current climate of life and faith. This reality we're living in is difficult. We're making decisions we never thought we would have to make. To wonder how long this pandemic might last before we're able to gather together again as we did before is a place I don't like to dwell. This place of heavy grief and an almost disjointed encounter with reality might be relatively similar to the experiences of the disciples we hear about in today's text, too. These two people were leaving Jerusalem because their mentor and friend was killed three days ago, and they might fear what sorts of retaliation they might also receive for being proponents of this Messiah figure. However, Despite the re this reality these two disciples are experiencing, and maybe even despite our own reality around us, the risen Christ subverts our expectations at every turn. On this road that Cleopas and his companion are walking, I'm sure that they feel rather alone. The many crowds that lauded Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem only a short while ago are now nothing more than a fond memory. They may as well be walking roads by which they first traveled to Jerusalem, full of hope and expectation, now traveling in the other direction, filled to the brim with despair and grief. A friend of, it, a friend of mine framed this idea by using a song from our time. I walk the lonely road, the only one that I have never known. Even with a companion, these two disciples likely feel much lonelier than they did a few short days ago. And yet, the risen Christ joins them on the road, subverting their feelings of loneliness. On a basic level, I'm sure that these disciples might be thankful to not be on their own, but this new companion seems rather curious and will be good conversation for the rest of their seven-mile journey to the Emmaus. Little do they know that Jesus' internal song is something like, But I will walk 500 miles, and I will walk 500 more. We, like these disciples, might feel like that we are walking these roads of life on our own, or that we're walking with a much smaller group than we normally would like to or expect to. Yet Jesus walks alongside us all the while. On this road of their travel, this new companion asks these two people about their stories, or more specifically, the stories that are at the forefront of their minds. In the relaying of these tales, Christ is there, present, and listening to the stories that hold so much grief and hopelessness and pain. 
But Christ isn't there just to hear these people tell this painful story again in some manipulative manner, but instead to hear the important ways in which this story has resonated deep within them, and to pastorally listen to the ways these two individuals might best receive some sense of consolation and care. Christ returns their storytelling with more storytelling, shaping the stories of promise, sharing these stories of promise. Maybe even some of these stories of promise that we read at Easter Vigil. These promises would likely be familiar to these two disciples, evoking some of that same sense of hope that carried them on their journey towards Jerusalem, now as they travel away. We, alongside these disciples, might be carrying stories heavy laden with grief and pain. And Christ hear those stories, hears those stories, cares for us in our grief, and holds in tension the promises of God alongside his pain. Then, in a moment of immense hospitality, the two, the two disciples invite Jesus into their residence for the night, that this stranger that they've met might not continue to travel throughout the night alone. Maybe Jesus' internal song that was just uh, that was on such a strong amount of repeat that he might have been ready to keep going all through the night. Still, these two travelers likely weren't expected to have another person with them for their meal that night, yet their radical hospitality, potentially inspired by the company of this stranger that they met on the road or his stories of promise, provides space for them to share a meal together. And it's in this meal, in the breaking of the bread, that the larger story that is present in this text comes finally to fruition. They recognize that it was Christ who was with them all the while. We, like these disciples, might not expect much of anything at a meal with a stranger. Yet Christ uses these ordinary spaces for the sake of transformation and revelation so that we might better understand the risen Christ. The breaking of bread in this place serves as the tipping point for this, trans this transformation for these disciples. And for us, when we hear the words breaking of bread in the gospel text, especially as they happen after the resurrection and after the whole Holy Week story that we've heard, especially now, our minds might immediately jump to the sacrament of Holy Communion. And it is an incredible and insightful and helpful place to land in our understanding of communion. It's an opportunity to gather at Christ's table together as a community for the sake of a transformational encounter with the risen one. However, bread also shows up in many other places throughout the Gospels. More than anything, bread beyond the story of the Last Supper helps us to see the ways in which bread within the kingdom of God is exceedingly abundant. Think of the feeding of the 5,000 as one example of this. Additionally, we might remember that Jesus was criticized for the people with whom he ate, social outcasts, and those whom society wasn't happy with. Thinking that these people would be included in the kingdom of God was a radically transformational perspective. And the use of the breaking of bread and gathering of meals to point with them to that idea is an incredibly important piece of understanding this larger text. We might not be able to gather with our loved ones at table together for a meal. We might not be able to gather with strangers for the comfort of a meal at a restaurant. 
We might not be able to gather around a table together in this sanctuary. Yet, despite these many obstacles, we are yet drawn together into the beloved community of God's wondrous creation by means of Christ's unexpected subversions of what we might expect in our journeys as they currently are. As unfamiliar as they might be to our own selves in these times, Christ walks with us in our stories. As heavy as they might be with grief and pain in this moment, Christ listens to these stories and equips us with ways to frame them with hope in addition to the ways that we are already framing them. In our meals, as strange and lonely as they might feel, Christ is with us there, breaking bread, revealing himself to us, and giving us sustenance for the journey ahead. A journey of running to tell others of these stories that have been granted us by the one who conquered death. For these journeys, for these stories, for these meals. Thanks be to God. Amen. creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, 
for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring, healthy, des desiring healing in body and spirit. Especially Beth, Donna, Betty, Paul, Barb, Kevin, Connie, Lois, Betty, Beverly, Ron, Dwight, Chris, Kathy, Janice, and all those we name now in the quiet of our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, Confirmation, and Membership, for those who participate in Sunday School and Adult Education, guide and, inspire, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability, especially as we learn from a distance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, especially Pete Ballum, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and joy their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Re reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. At this time, if you have communion elements with you, you are welcome to commune one another if you're gathered with more than one person, or if you're by yourself, or I'll speak the words of receiving this communion to you right now. This is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. 